today I thought we would talk about uh, cranial nerve, uh, in particular the facial nerve, which is the seventh cranial nerve, and as we all know there are 12 of them. Um, the facial nerve is considered to be quite a complex, or the most complex, uh, cranial nerve. Um, and there are a few reasons why uh, it can become affected or create the uh, paralysis uh, in the face. Um, particularly in dogs, uh, ear infections um, or undiagnosed ear infections can cause um, facial paralysis. Um, a low functioning thyroid can also um, cause it. Um, sometimes uh, the cause can be idiopathic, so much the same as humans with bell palsy. You know how they sort of get the, the bell palsy and the drooping face and the drooping eye. Um, sometimes the cause is unknown. Um, and then there are also uh, tumours that can also affect the facial nerve. Um, so what does the facial nerve do in the dog? Um, it has a lot to do with facial expressions. Uh, so you might notice that one side of the face uh, is a bit expressionless and the other was, the other's working fine, or maybe there's a bit of atrophy. Um, when the dog eats or drinks, maybe there's some saliva or food um, or water falling out the side of the face. Um, sometimes the eye may not be able to blink completely. Um, or certain reactions which should cause the eye to blink may be absent. And the other one that you have to also take into consideration um, is the air. So sometimes the air um, isn't moving or reflexing the way it should either. Um, so I thought today we'd just run through some of those reflexes. If you thought or were considering that maybe uh, the facial nerve may be affected. If we think that the cranial nerve um, seven, the facial nerve is affected, the first thing we want to look at is uh, the facial expressions and observe them. So I recently had a dog come through. It was quite a hot day. This dog presented uh, with a facial nerve paralysis. And when the dog came in, like I said, it was a hot day. The mouth was open. One side or the unaffected side, the lips were curled right back. And the, uh, the affected side, the lips just weren't uh, pulled back as far. Um, and I also noticed that when the dog took a drink, um, because the affected side lips were quite droopy, uh, when she went to take a, uh, some water, the water sort of spilled out that side and she dribbled quite a lot. Um, the third thing I noticed as an observation was that uh, the affected side, the eyelid just wasn't completely closing. She would do these kind of little shutter uh, blinks, but never quite completely blink the eye. Um, so they, that might be some giveaways um, that you might be thinking that the facial nerve is affected and then you might want to go through and just investigate those a little bit more. Um, so the first thing I'd look at is what's called the menace response. Now it's important to note that the menace response does uh, test the cranial nerve, uh, the facial nerve, but it also tests two other ones too. So cranial nerve six, which is the abducens nerve, and the optic nerve, which is cranial nerve two. So when you go to do the menace response, you wanna do quite a quick response close to the eye, but not touch it. And the normal response is the dog should close its eye. So she's pretty zoned out, but let's sort of see. See how she it instantly closed and closed again. So that's a normal response when they close. Um, if they don't close the eye, um, and always test the other side as well. You might be thinking that the facial nerve uh, might be affected there. Uh, the second one I'd like to look at is the palpable reflex. So again, we're looking at the eye function and if you get your finger and just touch sort of almost near the corner of the eye here, normal response is the dog should close its eye and Paige does that well. Um, this also tests uh, the trigeminal nerve as well, so cranial nerve five along with the facial nerve. Um, the third one is called the fibrisse reflex. So you just sort of, even if you get like a long cotton bud for this one or your finger, and you're sort of gonna touch the top part of their lip, you were looking to see some reaction. So she's lying down, she moved her um, foot. Um, if she was standing up, a normal response would be to curl the lip or move away from this annoying thing that I'm doing. 
Um, and this one also tests, again, the trigeminal nerve along with the facial nerve. Um, the next reflex is called the auricular reflex. So if you, if I bring my camera around a little bit and we look at Paige's ear, if I get into the inside of her ear, see how she moves her ear? So instantly reflex, that's a normal reflex. A dog with a facial uh, cranial nerve paralysis will not exhibit that. Um, other things that you want to be looking or feeling for, um, if they can feel touch down the uh, mandible or sort of through their cheek, um, you might want to have a bit of a feel through there and see if they react to your touch as well. Um, so those are the main ones that I look for if I'm thinking the facial nerve might be involved um, and it gives you weight uh, to your neurological exam. Thank you.